Good day everyone. Today I'm going to do the little uh, review on a 555 timer, a stable oscillator that you can adjust the frequency and the duty cycle. And I got this from uh, icstation.com. I'm going to post the link down in the description for those who are interested in this little neat little device. And of course people are going to say, well, why didn't you build it yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could have built it myself. But this is actually a dual layer uh, PC board that, well, component are mounted and it uses readily available equipment. You have a little jumper here which you can select your capacitor, which I'm pretty sure it goes from this one to all those uh, tiny little one. And then you have two potentiometer, one, sh one that will adjust the frequency and one that will adjust the duty cycle. Actually, I think it's a combination of the two that you will get the actual result that you want. And of course, what is nice is the 555 is actually mounted on uh, a dip connector so you can actually replace if you have the bad habit of putting your screwdriver when you where you shouldn't put it. And the 555 timers are actually very, very cheap on the internet. I think I got like 20 of those and they were like 50 cents each or something. So they're very, very good. And I don't remember by heart the price, but it's going to be in the description link. And for something that's already built and it's sure to work. And if you need some more frequency, I'm pretty sure you can desolder these capacitor and add uh, your own capacitor and actually build uh, something very nice with that. So, of course, it generates a square wave. So, beside, if you want to use it for something else, well, you might have to do some modification. But right off the bat, it generates a square, uh, square wave. And, of course, it's on the voltage of what you input in it. So, right now, I'm feeding it with 6 volt. Because my little uh, handy-dandy digital oscilloscope works on 6 volts. And I have everything set up through my power supply. And I have my analog scope right now, which, well, you can really see that it doesn't do much at low frequency. And that's kind of a downfall for uh, for analog oscilloscope. Even though I slow it down, we don't really see something uh, very interesting. But they can be useful at higher frequency. So I have my digital one, which actually makes uh, all the calculation for me because I'm kind of lazy today. I don't want to do any uh, formula for calculating the frequency. Uh, the only thing that I can't say is actual duty cycle. It's actually pretty much right now it's uh, I would say 50% 50, 50 duty cycle. So I'm going to go on ahead and play with the different potentiometer and we're going to go ahead and see what they're actually done too. And I've played a little bit with uh, this capacitor right now, the lower capacitor, the biggest capacitor right now, and this one actually fixed the frequency, and this one kind of play with the duty cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and play with the right one, and we're going to see what's actually doing. So I'm turning it clockwise, and I'm going to turn it quite a lot so we can actually see something. And as you can see, right now, the LED is flashing faster. And if I keep turning it, we see that it actually goes faster and faster and faster. Now, if we look at the scope shot, well, let me slow that down. There we go. Uh, we're at 3 hertz, roughly, 3.5 hertz. And, oops my camera off and you can see here the the output the maximum is 5 point uh, 5 volt point well 5.6 uh, it very and don't don't worry too much about the uh, lower peak of the wave because digital oscilloscope I don't know why it has a tendency sometimes to go uh, very negative for no reason it, it wasn't it's not the best oscilloscope you can get but that was the only one I could afford at that time. It actually works pretty well too. So let's go on ahead and increase it a more. Oh, 
Right, there we go. Something that flashed a little bit faster. All right. All right, now we're getting something that we can actually see on boat scope. My uh, analog one is showing a wonderful square wave there, very nice and clear. And same one for the digital one. Now let's go on ahead and play with the left potentiometer. Right now I have it turned it fully, uh, I think it's half in the middle. So, as we can see here, actually increase the uh, on time and we can see that with the LED. The LED is actually the uh, reverse of what the scope show. When the output is high the LED is actually off. So that means that you can still use the output to drive something else and you won't really uh, see it on your circuit which is actually pretty nice. Of course the LED can be Remove if for power consumption reason it actually bothers you. And if I still continue, well, the, the on time is actually increasing. And if I go it, and now I'm actually turning it clockwise, you can see it actually goes shorter. And of course, it will actually affect the frequency. This is actually. Uh, uh, kind of a, a downfall but actually not at the same time of having two potentiometer to adjusting the frequency and the duty cycle as uh, with that settings you'll actually get uh, almost all the duty cycles you actually search for it and now right now I'm actually reached the point of where the 555 is actually uh, not <laughs> oscillating anymore so you just have to back up a little bit and it will restart. So that's about the minimum you can get. And let's go on ahead and increase the frequency uh, more. So 30 hertz. Let's increase it more. And I'm actually at the end of the first capacitor. And if we play with the, poten the left potentiometer again, as you can see, Varying the top of the 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 on time, I'm at, I'm increasing the on time if I go counterclockwise, and I'm decreasing it if I go clockwise. Now that's all pretty good, but that's the lowest frequency you can uh, you can go with the lowest and the highest with the first settings. So I'm gonna go on ahead and change the jumper. Ooh, I'm untaping my stuff here. That's wonderful. Next thing I think I need to buy a camera stand. All right. So now I've changed the jumper and I'll just go on ahead and reset this potentiometer just for the fun of it and of course well we can see right now we're getting a little uh, higher in the frequency there we go nice and clean square wave there and a digital oscilloscope will fix that in a few seconds all right here we go so I just turned the potentiometer randomly here and we're about at 205 hertz of course well we can't see the LED anymore because it's blinking too fast for the camera and even for my eyes so I'm gonna play with the left potentiometer and let's see what it actually does so as you can see now the adjustment on uh, the duty cycle actually is uh, more visible right now we can actually see it goes and I'm turning it counterclockwise and now clockwise and of course you see the frequency actually going uh, it plays a little bit and you can actually see it better on the analog oscilloscope 
go on and hit focus here. Turning it clockwise and counterclockwise. Now I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and play with the right one and I'm going to put it to the maximum. Let's see what type of frequency we get. As we can see, it's stopped. So. And the duty cycle is actually pretty small on this one. So I'm going to go and play with the left one. See what we can do with that. And we kind of lost we kind of lost the wave here. So turning it cl clockwise. Of course, we're still increasing and then we we change the duty cycle again. So for for getting uh, all sorts of frequency, you'll actually have to play with both potentiometer at the same time. And right now we can see we're actually at 3.9 kilohertz. So on the second settings, that's actually the maximum frequency you can get. Let's go on and go with the third one. And so 41 kilohertz, and we kind of lost the square wave here. Uh, but apparently on the analog it's still pretty uh, it's a pretty decent square wave. You can see here it's going a little down. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's just I haven't I haven't uh, calibrated my probe to my for my digital oscilloscope so that's probably just that. And uh, if I play with one potentiometer we actually see it very nice and clear here. I lost the frequency. So a small adjustment will uh, actually make a bigger difference on higher frequency. So definitely uh, what's good to have is a nice oscilloscope or a frequency counter depending on what you're actually searching for. And let's go on ahead and put the last jumper. Let's see. Ooh. So we're almost <laughs> at the maximum frequency the 555 is actually be able to uh, bring. Just going to go and uh, bring down the frequency here till we actually get our 5 volt peak. And uh, I think we pretty much lost it on uh, let's my uh, nice and handy uh, analog oscilloscope show a wonderful frequency there. Sorry, square wave. And uh, we get a little bit of <clears throat> ringing here. I'm pretty sure that's due to the fact that we're actually going uh, almost in, uh, in the megahertz range here. I'm almost at the maximum of my scope. And this is a 25 megahertz oscilloscope. And of course, as people know, uh, the uh, 555 timer is actually uh, good up to 2 megahertz. So uh, depending on what you want for frequency, let's say you're building a, fly a flyback driver, this might actually be a nice little handy device that you can actually find the perfect frequency for your, um, for your actual flyback and then uh, you can move on with a permanent board, more permanent board if you want to build just a circuit for that. But I'd say for the price of these, <laughs> I think I'm gonna buy more for uh, a couple of flyback that I have uh, lying around here. So for me, that's an actual pretty nice little device. And <clears throat> well, it covers almost all the frequency you might need just on a, on a switch of a jumper. And I'm pretty sure you could do some comb combination uh, with switch. So if you want to do yourself a nice little uh, square wave generator, you can do uh, you can do one with one of these for very cheap. All right. Thanks for watching. And, uh, have a good day.